This is the track Push It Way Up from Beacons. And this video is going to be about the last two-thirds of the song, which is a build-up that lasts from minute 53 until the end at 7.05. And this is just going to be about the structure of the build-up. Uh, I'm not going to get too deep into mix-type stuff, but I'll separate out the tracks and all that, and you can hear you know, everything that's going on. So the basic structure, uh, it starts with this, um, at the end of the last part, it starts like this. So with that last hit on the drums, you start hearing very low in the mix, um, two audio tracks. One is an Ebo, that sounds like this. And that is going on the whole time, as well as a kind of picked out part with a lot of delay on it, that sounds like this. And this was the first, this picked part, was the first thing I wrote um, for this section. And it was originally supposed to be, or I originally wrote it to try to emulate like a Philip Glass type part. I think at the time I was listening to a lot of Philip Glass radio on uh, Pandora. And I thought it'd be cool. I'm not sure what, uh, how, what I was thinking it would turn into but that was the original inspiration. Um, and it's just a straight 4-4 four, four riff, but combined with this Ebo, it sounds like this. The next guitar part that I wrote is the tapping part that comes in here, and you can see the time signature changes to 14-4. So that 4-4 four, four, uh, part that I just played you just kind of, I guess, loops underneath, and it kind of meanders in and out of the time signature of the tapping part. So this is the next part that I wrote here. <laughs> But as soon as that tapping part comes in, you don't really notice the um, underlying picked part because the drums also come in. And so the, the drums pretty closely match the tapped part. And the style of the drums, at least the hi-hat accents, were pretty much lifted from um, Isis, uh, specifically Panopticon, which is probably my favorite album of theirs. To me, that's a very Isis-y sounding drum pattern. So um, this tapping part along with the drums sounds like this. The kick pattern that I came up with for that drum part to kind of match the guitar the tapped guitar part ended up influencing the bass. The bass pretty directly matches it. I'll play those two together. So you can see the bass and the drums really kind of drive this groove pretty much the whole way. So to reiterate up to this point, the picked Philip Glassy guitar part came first. And then I came up with a tapping part 
that I thought was going to interact with the Philip Glassy part. But what it what that ended up doing was inspiring a drum part that then inspired a bass part that pretty much became the um like when the riff when this part ends it all winds up mimicking the bass so it all kind of concludes in a section that uh is focused on what the bass is playing here so i'll call this what we just listened to this whole part is the intro to the build up That's all what I would consider the intro. Now the the body of it kind of starts when this ebo comes in. And here's what the ebo sounds like with everything on it. There's a few bars, I think one or two bars of just the solid tone as it's introduced. And then later, I want to say right around here, where does it start going up? Okay, so there's one kind of repetition or bar of it, just a solid note. And then um, this, interestingly, was inspired by Ratatat. So it's an Ebo uh, played with a slide. And uh, I thought to do that after seeing Ratatat live. And uh, their guitarist used that technique pretty exclusively. Uh, I thought it would sound cool. It gives the Ebo a really eerie kind of quality. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of delay and reverb on here. Here's just the um, the normal, here's the unprocessed tone right here. And here's the same thing with all with a little bit of EQ, some compression, stereo delay, and reverb. cool sounding so what's happening is that the Evo starts out with a just a, a note and it goes from that note and slides really slowly through all these bars up here up to the first note of I think it's a three note pattern that this first layer of Evo plays for the rest of this build up and then when it when it slides, when it finishes that slide up to this point, then the drums kind of signal a transition um, by the accent changing from that um, hi-hat pattern to the same pattern, but now it's played on a china, which has a little more energy to it. Um, at the same time that the pattern switches from the hi-hat to the china, the left guitar comes in with a harmony of the tapping part that the right guitar is playing. So here's what it sounds like alone. And here's what it sounds like together with the other guitar. Yeah. 
here's what the Ebo, like I said, the Ebo is playing a three note pattern. And here's what that is. You can see, um, listen to this and it's, you can see that with the slide and I really kind of played it, not sloppy, but um, just really loose with the beat. And then with the delay and the reverb, it gives it this really kind of unsettled, eerie quality to it. So I'll play it with the drums and the bass. And this is the main like three note pattern that um, the rest of the ebos are based off of and the that they harmonize. And that goes on and on. Um, a little note about uh, things that I copied and pasted. Uh, looking up here at the guitars, so like the left guitar and the right guitar, it's pretty obvious that I copied and pasted uh, brief sec sections. The right guitar, an even smaller section than the left guitar, but a lot of copying and pasting going on there. The bass, um, I played a big chunk of and then only copied it once. And I, if I remember correctly, I think that's just because I enjoyed playing that uh, bass line so much. It was just fun to play. And that is uh, finger-picked, I think, throughout this build-up part. The Ebo, you can see right here, uh, I might have split it once. I think I just did... did a couple takes of that slide up just to get it I might have messed it up a couple times but then the rest of it is all one take um, I'll it, with a part like the Ebo I feel like doing it all in one take not only it wasn't super challenging so it was easy to um, to get all in one take but by not copying and pasting that since that's really where most of the character is coming from in this buildup, it um, there's going to be a lot of variation. Again, since I'm playing it so loose against the beat, there's going to be a lot of variation in um, in each bar or set of bars as it goes on. So adding that layer of kind of humanization, I think, really helps the overall tone of this part. So now we've established the kind of body, uh, you know, how the part's going to sound with this, with the Ebo line, the the bass underneath, the two harm, harmonized lead guitars, and then, like I showed you at the very beginning, at the very bottom of all this, throughout the whole track, are, or throughout the whole part, are these two, um, two tracks all the way in the bottom of the mix. So that's all going on right here. At this point, it's one, two, three, four, five, six tracks of guitar. The next thing that happens is that you have the first harmony of the Ebo. So now we have two Ebo tracks. So here's the harmony that comes in, I guess, one or two bars after the first one. Again, a lot of reverb and delay on it. Here's what the two sound like together. The next thing that happens is that after two repetitions of that um, those harmonies another Ebo comes in but at the same time uh, uh, another kind of I guess energy modification is signaled with the drums by going from that um, the same 
accent pattern that was on the hi-hat into the china is now going to be played on a uh, crash cymbal, which gives it a lot more energy. You can hear it here. I'll play just the transition. And I think it kind of goes without saying, but I'll just say it, that my whole kind of one of the things that I do with parts like this is just bringing the energy up by kind of filling in more and more the spectrum, you know? So filling in the bass with more lead guitars, the kind of mid-range with these with the Ebo tracks and you know now we're kind of talking about the high end with which symbols are accenting the like main groove obviously going from a china to a crash is going to really increase just what's happening in the upper range and you can tell I'll play it all at once um, after I play this Ebo the third Ebo harmony that comes in so at the same time that that change just happened with the drums, now you have this third Ebo harmony that sounds like this. So at this point, all the Ebos together sound like this. So the whole thing through this kind of final transition or energy state, I guess, this is what the whole transition sounds like. So you can really see where it has built from when it started. Um, kind of a note about, like another note about this whole process. Like I started out writing music on my own really through a loop pedal. So I think a lot of the way that I construct music like this is with that same mentality of taking one idea, building on that, and maybe modifying off of that and then building on that, modifying off of that and building on that. So by the time we get to this point, it's pretty well fleshed out. And uh, there's some ambient tracks here, here, and here. There's three of them that happen. But I've listened to this a couple times before making this video, and I don't even remember making those. I don't think they add that much. Um, if I were making the track today, I probably would have cut it a couple bars shorter because I just don't think, I think it kind of maintains a, a energy state for a little too long. But the next main change that happens is one of the guitars, I believe it's the left guitar, starts mimicking the bass. And I want to say that happens right here. <laughs> And it's harmonizing the bass. So the two of them together sound like this. The third guitar is continuing with that tapping part. Cool. 
when that change happens with the guitar, where it starts when the left guitar starts mimicking the bass, down in the ebos, um, these let's see these two so the two harmonizations of the main one kind of they start playing just a solid note so they go from that three note pattern down to let's see if i can get it here So the pattern that they were playing at that changeover morphs into just a solid harmony. And the main Ebo um, does this interesting thing that I believe was, I just kind of improvised um, at the time. It's kind of like a descending note pattern that ends, I think, in the low B. So here's what that sounds like from the change. And that's where that stays the rest of the song. Uh, one cool thing about the Ebo that you might have heard with that solo track is that um, one of the things that happens with it is depending on a bunch of factors, but like where the Ebo is in relation to the pickup, in relation to where your finger is on the fretboard, and how long the string's been vibrating a lot of those factors can cause it to like move in or out of this kind of harmonic of the note that you're playing. And you can hear it when I played that, you can hear it kind of go in and out of that. Um, and it also, since I'm still playing it with the slide, it's kind of unpredictable um, just with all those factors together, which really adds to, I think, you know, especially with all the delay and reverb, it adds to that the overall character of this part. So here's all three of these Ebos together. I might as well mention at this point that the main Ebo is centered, you know, panning wise. The um, first Ebo harmonization is panned a little bit to the right, and the second one is panned a little bit to the left. So there's a little bit of a spread going on there. Here's what they all sound like at this transition. Last element of what's going on there, I mentioned that the um, the left guitar changed to a pattern that's mimicking the bass. Well, the drums also change. They go back to the china, but this time it's just a quarter. It's hitting on the quarter, so it sounds like this. So it really changes that groove from the more kind of jittery start and stop um, accent to a real driving kind of groove. Um, so this is really the meat of what's happening. So we're slowly going, you know, one guitar at a time towards the end part that sounds like this. So again, I changed from the China to the crash, a little bit more energy at the end of the song. And then the bass changes to, uh, I think, the higher harmony. And it's uh, I'm playing with a pick now. Go 
guitar left is playing this. So it's matching the bass. Guitar right is playing this. So it's now playing what the bass was playing throughout the song or throughout the uh, build part. Underneath, real low in the mix, I kept the tapping part but put a bunch of um, delay on it, which sounds like this. Just to have that kind of continue in the background. And then let's see, I think the Ebos change to like just an octave of each other. So this is again going into that last final transition where the song, it's basically kind of like the outro of the build part. Here's what all the ambient tracks sound like at this point. The very last thing that happens is, um, I think I just wanted I didn't like for some reason when it stopped just abruptly, so I put this little tapping part in. I'm not sure if this part was originally going to be another part of the song or if it was um, just an idea that didn't go anywhere, or if I, I want to say that I just came up with it to be the riff that fades out. But uh, there's a lot of, uh, it's like kind of a flanger effect and then reverb on it. Here's what it sounds like all alone. <laughs> It's a little fade out here with the automation. Here's what it sounds like with, it's called the spreader and uh, platinum verb, I think. And that's it. I'll show you these ambient tracks that come in you don't really notice them and they don't really do a whole lot. Um, which is kind of why I said if I had, if I was going to do it again, I'd probably, um, just cut out maybe the last two bars of this of the middle build part right before the outro. Um, and in fact, when we played this song live in 2014, that's what we did. We just cut it by two bars and it was great. So here's the first track that comes in towards the end. just a picked chord part nothing it doesn't really do anything other than that second part is I think a harmony of that it sounds like that here's what the two of them sound like together and then there's a third one right here here's what the three of them sound like It seems like you would notice it. I'll play it all at this point. I think the reason that they don't really matter is because I think a lot of the, the notes that they're playing are also happening um, over all the guitars and the ebos. So I just don't think they add a whole lot. Um, if I was going to do it over again, I'd probably maybe mess around with some automation, like some volume automation on the ebos to maybe like bring them forward a little bit more to add to that um, the energy at the end instead of just adding more guitar tracks and that's just something that uh, that's kind of where I've gone just in the uh, almost 10 years since I recorded this that uh, that would be what I would be inclined to do at this point so yeah three main influences for this part uh, Isis 
Philip Glass, and Ratatat. And that's about it. <laughs>